Emert International proudly presents the Moving Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Built in 1893, the Odd Fellows Hall in Salt Lake City, Utah is a building with enormous historical significance. During its lifetime, it has hosted many significant events. The location of the building blocked the planned expansion of the Federal Courthouse in Salt Lake City. Because of the historical significance of the building, the General Services Administration chose to relocate the building to a nearby location rather than tear it down. Emert International has a long and successful history of moving the impossible. The Odd Fellows Hall is indeed a unique structure to be moved. It's a three-story brick building with a basement. The building, as moved by Emert, totaled approximately 5.5 million pounds. GSA put the project of moving the Odd Fellows Hall out to bid. During the bidding process, GSA learned that many companies felt that the Odd Fellows Hall was too fragile to withstand a move. Emert International was successful in being awarded the relocation. Emert had to overcome many structural and technical difficulties for the move of the Odd Fellows Hall. The move of the very fragile building was a difficult move. Emmert's engineers and managers put together innovative plans to accomplish the project and fabricated specialized equipment that would be needed specifically for the move of the Odd Fellows Hall. Emmert mobilized to Salt Lake City and began the preparation to move the building. The Odd Fellows building facade presented an engineering and operational challenge as it was built as a separate structure that was not integrally attached to the adjoining low-fired brick masonry exterior wall structure. The facade also incorporated large masonry arch structures that were supported by large central masonry and cast iron columns. Preliminary engineering study indicated that the facade had also settled at various locations, potentially introducing additional forces into the cast iron columns. Knowing this information allowed Emmert to optimize the placement of the steel support structure along with the size and placement of the wood shims so that no additional stresses or movement was introduced into the facade structure during the move. To prepare the building for its move, the windows and doorways had to be infilled with concrete block. Interior supports needed to be installed. The brickwork had to be pointed and the building needed to be reinforced with rebar and shotcrete to support the fire escape stairs. In addition, groundwork and trenching needed to be done to facilitate the installation of a steel support framework underneath the building. Emmert and the others involved in this project conducted a thorough inspection and then inventoried the existing deterioration, damage, and erosion to the building. The inventory and supporting documentation included a room-by-room -room photo of every wall, ceiling, doorway, and window opening. Each existing crack or brick misalignment was documented. The inventory also included the exterior walls from top to bottom and the roof structure. The inventory documented that the Odd Fellows Hall had hundreds of existing cracks in the brickwork. Holes were cut in the walls of the Odd Fellows Hall and trenches dug underneath the building to prepare it for Emmert to install the structural steel framework that had been designed by Emmert to support the building during its lift and move. Emmert designed and fabricated custom hydraulic jacking for the five main beams. The main beams were the first beams installed. The main beams were 137 feet long boxed beams made of two W36 by 245 wide flange beams, 500 pounds per foot. Each main beam held 12 of Emmert's 168 ton hydraulic jacks that were installed inverted inside the beam and hard plumbed. Trenches had to be cut in the parking lot south of the Odd Fellows Hall to allow for the installation of the main beams underneath the building. After the main beams were in place, Emmert installed the 25 modified 58-foot long cross beams made of W24 by 146 wide flange beams, some of them boxed. The cross beams were laid perpendicular to the main beams and then welded into place to provide additional stability for the building during the move. After the cross beams were in place, sill beams that were W12 by 65 wide flange were placed inside and outside the building in a parallel configuration to the existing walls. Needle beams that were W8 by 67 wide flange were placed perpendicular to the walls. 
crib blocks, wedges, and shims were used to fill the area between the beams and the building. Emmert used three double-acting pump machines, which Emmert had specifically designed for this type of project. Emmert's design to accomplish this move called for the structural steel framework to be configured into three hydraulic zones. Pressure equal to 80% of the weight of the building was applied to the exterior walls of the building. The building was again thoroughly inspected by Emmert to identify any point loading, soft spots, or areas where additional wedges or shimming was needed to ensure equal loading of the building onto the structural steel framework. The building was then raised inch by inch on solid 4 foot by 4 foot crib block jacking towers made up of 6 inch by 8 inch by 4 foot crib blocks. Overall, the Odd Fellows Hall was raised a total of 13 feet to provide sufficient space for placement of the Emmert 70 ton hydraulic dollies underneath the building. Emmert crews built dolly runway tracks out of 6 inch by 8 inch by 4 foot crib blocks and various size crane mats. Overall, 30,000 crib blocks were used on this project. When the tracks were completed, Emmert placed 55 of its hydraulic dollies under the main beams. Steering was designed and installed for the 55 dollies so their direction could be synchronized. Prior to moving the Odd Fellows Hall, the soil was prepared to 98% compaction. Thereafter, steel plates were laid over the soil in a pattern to allow the building to be moved and spun 180 degrees. Emmert's engineering of the pattern for laying the steel plates required extensive analysis of the lateral forces which would be exerted. Once the steel plate was installed and checked, the move of the Odd Fellows Hall began. The building was moved to the west 160 feet by winch truck with steel cables, shiv blocks, shackles, and straps. The building was spun 180 degrees to position it in its proper orientation at its new home across Market Street. In order to spin the building, Emmert rotated its 55 hydraulic dollies in a circular pattern. Each dolly axle needed to be in line at the exact center point of the building with the spin dolly. Winch trucks were positioned on the two corners of the building, diagonally opposite of each other. Steel cables were used to winch the building through its 180 degree spin. During the spin process, movement was limited to approximately 100 feet of rotation at a time. The winch trucks were then repositioned for another pull. This process continued until the 180 degree spin of the building was complete. The dolly axles stayed in perfect alignment throughout the spin. In order to move Oddfellows Hall across Market Street, the building had to be rolled back over its original foundation area so it could be moved into alignment with its new foundation across Market Street. The old foundation and basement area had been cleared of crib blocks and crane mats, then filled in with hundreds of cubic yards of soil. Steel plate was placed over the new fill to reduce friction and compact the soils evenly. Winch trucks were used to pull the building 220 feet to the east over its old foundation pad. Before the move across Market Street could take place, a great deal of work needed to be complete to ensure the pathway across Market Street was properly prepared. Some of the existing sewer lines under Market Street were constructed of wood, and this was a great concern to Emmert and the city. Emmert's placement of its hydraulic jacking towers at the original site of the Oddfellows Hall was surveyed and then duplicated at the building's new home. The hydraulic jacking towers had to be exactly vertical because the building needed to be lowered 13 feet at its new location. Winch trucks with steel cables, shiv blocks, and shackles were used to pull the building 200 feet across Market Street and onto the vacant land next to the Oddfellow Hall's new home. On the north side of Market Street, there were three constraints that Emmert had to overcome. The New Yorker restaurant immediately adjacent to the west had a basement level that was 10 feet lower than the elevation of the hall path. The new mat foundation for the Oddfellows building was also 10 feet below the hall path, and there was an existing road east of the new foundation that could not be closed. This required the support steel and hydraulic system for the building to be placed under the building on one side and extended out the wall on the other. 
knowing their required support structure dimensions to keep the road open, the movement north across Market Street was designed around minimizing the surcharge loading on the New Yorker, while at the same time maximizing the distance from the new foundation in order to minimize the cost of the haul path transition over the new foundation. The available clearance for the rigging on the west side of the building was limited. Emmert had only one half of an inch of clearance between the cables and the existing building. Emmert's rigging had six cable lines on each side of Oddfellows Hall for a total of 12 lines. The pull had to be stopped and the rigging had to be adjusted every four feet because of the tight clearances. At the predetermined location during the move, the Oddfellows Hall needed to be in perfect alignment for the final move east over the site of its new foundation, as there would be very little opportunity for an adjustment to align the building from that point forward. Once the pull to the north across Market Street was complete, it took two days to rotate Emmert's wheeled hydraulic dollies, align the winch trucks, and set up the rigging for the pull of the Oddfellows Hall over the site of its new foundation. With the building at its new home, the next step was to lower it to the predetermined elevation for the installation of the new foundation and support piers. Emmert lowered the building inch by inch, averaging 6 to 12 inches of fleeting each day. While the building was being lowered, Emmert removed the crib blocks and dolly track. With the move complete, the citizens of Salt Lake City will have the historic Oddfellows Hall to enjoy for many years to come. Emmert received letters of accommodation from GSA's engineering consultant, a highly regarded expert in the field of structural relocation. When comparing the Oddfellows building to other famous high-profile structural relocation projects, the experts stated they were picnics compared to the one you just completed. I would like to congratulate you and your staff on the extremely difficult job you have successfully completed. Many had their doubts, but you have proven them all wrong. This successful relocation must be filed under one of the most difficult accomplishments in the industry, and you and your staff, especially Mike Albrecht, can be very proud of a job well done. The actual relocation consisting of five individual moves, one more complex than the other, was an accomplishment only a few relocation contractors could have pulled off successfully, if at all. The transitional move from the existing foundation onto the adjacent property to the west, as well as the final move onto the new foundation, were always a critical portion of the relocation. Both were well executed not to mention the 180-degree spin and the move across Market Street and the one onto the final foundation, with limited access for your equipment, which were a showman's case of professionalism. Again, congratulations on a job well done. Overall dimensions, length 137 feet, width 58 feet, height 80 feet, total gross weight as moved 5.5 million pounds, Planning for the job, eight months planning and permitting process, 2,820 hours of engineering, 4,880 hours of planning and coordination. Regulatory approvals from the City of Salt Lake City, Utah, local utilities companies, and General Service Administration. Physical elements encountered, five million pound, three-story building constructed of brick and limestone mortar and badly deteriorated. The soils in the path of travel were very poor and required substantial stabilization. Limited space and extremely tight clearances. Building had to be rotated 180 degrees and then aligning 55 independent dollies, 110 axles, 440 tires. No internal steel supporting the structure. Gaps between the courses of the bricks that compromised the walls of the building. Missing bricks in various spots. The building was unstable and required stabilization in various areas. The building had an existing bow of six inches from one end to the other on the east and west walls. Emmert used the second and third floors as a diaphragm and ran cables east and west through the building, supporting the walls and its natural curve. The building was four inches longer on one side than the other building needed to be relocated within a fraction of an inch of the surveyed location. Overcame underground challenges, safety considerations, work done in an excavation 13 feet below the ground level, 
limited space accentuated the need for accurate measurements and positioning. Comprehensive hazard analysis completed before the job began. Hazard analysis reviewed daily with crew. 100% compliance with site safety requirements. Radio communication between equipment operators and site personnel. Pre-lift meetings. Equipment used within tolerances. Personal safety equipment required at all times. All safety directives strictly adhered to. Emirates safety practices and policies were in effect at all times. All equipment was used within manufacturer specifications. Execution, 31,500 man hours on the job. Ingenuity and innovations. Specialized utilization of rigging in tight clearances. Hydraulic three-point leveling. Inverted hydraulic jacks within support system. 180 degree spin off of center dolly for alignment and proper orientation to be moved. Loss prevention, no property damage, no loss of time, no structural damage, no cargo damage, no equipment damage. All operations were safely performed under the care, custody, and control of Emmert International.